September 20th, 1970, Bob Grant hit the airwaves in New York and changed the New York talk radio scene forever. Your influence counts. Use it. For 40 years, Bob Grant has entertained, informed, and irritated. And you are too. A thorn in the side of politicians has been fired too many times to count. And along the way, influenced some of the biggest talk superstars of our time. There is only one Bob Grant. And while some call me the great one, honestly, Bob, you're the great one. Now, straight ahead on 77 WABC, it's the Bob Grant 40th Anniversary Tribute and Roast with Ringmaster Mark Simone. Ringmaster? Well, uh, it's not just a circus. It's going to be a who's who of talk radio all here to pay tribute to Bob Grant. We've got everybody in the world coming on from uh, Rush Limbaugh to Sean Hannity to uh, Mark Levin to uh, uh, Barry Farber, a whole cast. You're not going to believe the names that are going to be here uh, to pay tribute to Bob Grant. You know, uh, WOR at one time was the number one talk station because of Bob Grant. WMCA in the 80s, number one talk station because of Bob Grant. And then in 1982, WABC went all talk. And we brought in the biggest, believe it or not, with all the names, all the people who came here, it just never took off until a couple of years later, they hired Bob Grant, put him on in the afternoons, and suddenly WABC became the biggest talk station in the world, and it's been that way ever since. Bob Grant, welcome to the station you built, to the format you built here. My heavens, thank you, Mark. It's good to see you, and uh, I wonder if our listeners know that uh, for a while we worked together at WMCA, the radio station that brought me out here in 1970. Now, in 1970, we had the biggest talk show hosts in New York. We had uh, Barry Gray. We had Long John Nebel. We had all these guys. And then all of a sudden, you came, this new guy, some guy from California, and did you shake things up? What were you thinking? What was what were you planning when you came here? Uh, my, well, that's a good question. I remember reading a magazine, a national magazine, which had an item on my being hired by our Peter Strauss. And uh, at the time, I had been in Los Angeles, and I remember reading the magazine on the airplane flying out here, and it said, "We wonder whether conservative." Bob Grant, firebrand that he is, will make it in liberal New York. <laughs> and uh, that intrigued me because uh, I thought, you know, maybe if the folks hear me and I talk to them, we'll find out they're not so liberal. They have more sense than that. And that's what happened. Explain that, though. New York is liberal. If you do a study or a survey or a poll, it's mostly liberal. Why are you so successful in New York City? Why is a Rush so successful in New York City? Uh, you remember the great late Danny Meenan? Yeah, the great newsman. Well, Danny uh, at first looked at me with that jaundiced New York look, you know, <laughs> and he didn't say much. And then one day he came in and he says, You're New York. You're New York. That's what he said to me. Uh, people accuse me of walking up and down the streets trying to absorb New Yorkese. I guess maybe I'm a natural born New Yorker, even though I didn't live there until uh, live here until 1970. Yeah, you're as New York a guy as I can imagine. Yet you grew up in Chicago. You're a Midwesterner. Born and raised in Chicago. Got uh, my uh, first big break on WBBM CBS in Chicago, and then. Uh, a few years later, uh, CBS uh, in uh, Los Angeles, KNX, uh, persuaded uh, me to come out there. And yeah. I went out there. And two years later, went to KABC. And that's when I first did a radio telephone talk show. And from the beginning, were you this fearless, uh, tough, uh, controversial figure on the radio? Uh yeah, I don't know what, what happens to me when I get in front of a microphone. I know this might sound weird, but <laughs> I get in front of a microphone. It's like uh, that uh, cartoon strip, Captain Marvel. I put on that. <laughs> Suddenly, I, I, I don't have to think about it. It just happens. Then I get away from a microphone, and I'm uh, uh, Mr. Zlub. 
Well, you're not Mr. Schlub, but you're Mr. Quiet, dignified guy walking around very quietly in real life. What happens on the radio when I hear you saying to the caller, I'll punch your nose right down your throat? Yeah, I've said that. As a matter of fact, you uh, might recall at uh, WMCA, we were on the third floor. Yeah. And uh, some guy called me. We were having this perennial, continual, incessant argument about marijuana. And this guy called and he said, uh, hey, listen, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come up there to that radio station. I'm going to take a a drag on this weed and I'm going to blow the smoke in your face. What do you say to that? And I said, if you do that, I'll punch your nose right down your throat. (laughs) A little while later... Uh, another guy called. He said, you know that, that guy that uh, said he was going to blow the uh, marijuana smoke in your face? I said, yes. He said, uh, you said he was gonna, you were going to punch his nose right down his throat. And I said, yes, I did. You remember well. He said, well, he ain't coming up to the studio, but I am. And sure enough, he did. <laughs> and we, <laughs> It was news break time, and I was going to go to the men's room and Florence, our oh, I late, Florence, lady yeah. at the switchboard, yeah. said, "You don't go out there! Don't go out there!" <laughs> I said, "Why not?" She said, "See that guy there?" I, I said, "You mean that great big guy there in the camel hair coat?" She said, "Yes, he came up here. He's looking for you. Don't go out." I said, "No, nah, I'm not going to hide from the guy." So I went out, and uh, I said, "Who who are you looking for?" He says, "I'm looking for Bob Grant." I said, okay, you found him. He says, you ain't Bob Grant. I said, well, how do you know I'm not Bob Grant? He said, because, because, well, I, I said, have you seen him? He says, well, uh, no, I, I haven't seen him, but I, I hear him, and he, he sounds like a big guy. You, you ain't no big guy. And I said, you are thinking I'm going to look like I sound? <laughs> Why well, aren't you stupid? And at that point, he said, you're Bob Grant. <laughs> well, Bob Grant is here for a, a two-hour uh, amazing tribute. We had a lot coming up. Mike Huckabee will be with us. Mark Levin this hour. Rush Limbaugh uh, to pay tribute to Bob Grant. We'll have Barry Farber, Monica Crowley, uh, Joe Nolan, uh, Congressman Peter King, Sean Hannity, Michael Harrison of uh, Talkers Magazine, and a whole lot more. And hopefully we'll have time for your calls, too. 1-800-848-WABC is the number. Well, it's Mark Simone here. It's our tribute to Bob Grant. The whole radio world is listening. We're going to have a who's who of talk radio on the program. We'll get to the great one in just a moment. I want to stick one guy on first. Bob, I want you to talk to this guy because this guy, Henry from Yonkers, in 1984, was the very first call you ever had on WABC. Henry, are you there? Hey, how you doing? You were the Hello? first. Yes, Henry, you were the first call to Bob, right? I was the very first call uh, Bob had in 1984. I wish I could say I remember the day and month. But, Bob, I, I cannot tell you what an honor this is, sir. Uh, th- there will never be someone like you. You're the Babe Ruth. I, I always tell everybody, I tell my kids, you are the George Washington of racism. Nobody has ever- well, that's, uh But you were the first call ever to uh, Bob Grant, and I want you to be our good luck charm first call today. You know who's on the line now? A guy who you've had, you've had so much influence on so many talk radio hosts, and here's one of the greatest in the world today, the great one, Mark Levin. How are you? Well, I'm doing great, and uh, he, Bob Grant, how are you, my brother? Well, I tell you, i got to be feeling great with all that's going on and uh, sitting here in this uh, hallowed studio and having people like you. Um, it, it's just, just great, Mark. Well, let me tell you something. I started listening to Bob Grant, honest to God, when I lived in Philadelphia and I had one of those AM radio things and I could pick up New York radio. You know, and I would listen and uh, pick it up. And when I was, I'm trying to remember the year, I forget, Reagan was running, may have been uh, whenever it was, and I, I wanted him to pick Jack Kemp to run with him. So Bob doesn't know, I don't know if I ever told you this, Bob, so I called your show. And I said, Did I, I have hang up on you? <laughs> well, you came close, but you liked me. I was 13 years old, and I saw 15, whatever, and I said, uh, I think Reagan should pick Kemp. And you said, no, 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 he can't win with Kemp. He needs to pick somebody more liberal like a Bush or something like that. And you said, but I like you. How old are you? 
And I said, I'm 13 years old. He said, you're going places, kid, or something like that. As I, but I'll never forget that little conversation. And it was hard as hell to get in, by the way. Your lines were always loaded. Yeah, well, you certainly did go places, oh Mark. Oh, gosh. I, I treasure what you've just said, uh, Mark. And uh, you've uh, gone on to become one of the, well, as you are known, the great one. Well, let, let me say this. <clears throat> you know, Bob, let me say something else about Bob Grant. Smart as hell, funny as hell, and a, and a one-of-a-kind personality. You know, I, I swear to God, Bob, your, your, your whole attitude, your whole way of doing things and everything is really what, uh, what certainly put talk radio on the map in New York and on the East Coast, because there was nobody like you. And then for a short period of time, he came to Philadelphia, WWDB, which I, I was thrilled because I could put you right on FM and hear you, you know, and and uh, but then you went back to New York. But I cannot tell you, you know, you have paved the way. You're going to hear this all day. I swear, ladies and gentlemen, it's true. He's paved the way. He's made it much easier for me, like guys, uh, guys like me, to do this because they used to attack him and accuse him of this, <laughs> that, and all the rest. I mean. And he didn't have any infantry coming in behind him to support him. They just pounded the hell out of him, and he just kept plodding along and stuck with his principles. That is what I learned from Bob Grant. God bless you, my friend. Wow. Uh, Mark, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate everything you've said. You know, people have told me, they said, you know, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't uh, be able to do what I'm doing right now. It's I didn't true. realize at the time that I was... Uh, cutting such a swath. I wasn't uh, doing it as John C. Fremont, the Pathfinder. I was doing it just Bob Grant, avoiding working for a living. See that? And, and, John and, C. You know, when, you, when you do what I do, I have done all these years, you can say, I have avoided working for a living because to me, this is never work. I love it. Uh, I love it. I, I, I just... Can't say enough. Uh, but Bob Mark. Grant, let me ask you something. You could have always made life easy for yourself. Did you ever say, maybe I'll tone it down a little? Maybe I'll be a little more cautious? Well, I'll tell you something, uh, which I don't think I've revealed before. But when I uh, started on WMCA, I was on in the morning right after Joyce Brothers. <laughs> now, can you imagine what a, what a contrast? Joyce Brothers goes <laughs> off because she would say, well, you know... I think that, and then I come on, uh, but Joyce Brothers, uh, wonderful woman, but her ratings were nowhere, so they dropped her, and I got her hours, so I went from a three-hour show to a four-hour show, and uh, I, <laughs> it, it's just amazing, I, I was uh, called by a radio station back on the West Coast, Yeah, and I, the guy says, look, Word has gotten out you don't like New York, and uh, you'd be open to coming back. And I said, uh, well, uh, you know, it's true. I don't like the subways. I haven't gotten used to the change, but uh, I signed a, a two-year deal, and I'm going to fulfill that. And the guy says, no, you know, you ought you to gotta, you gotta get out of it. Well, what I started doing was getting nastier and nastier <laughs> because I figured Peter Strauss would not go for that because he was a very uh, refined gentleman. He called me in, just like you said, and he said, Bob, you know, uh, uh, you should, using your expression, Mark, you should tone it down. You, you should be much nicer. And uh, I said, well, if I do that, I, I don't think uh, it's going to work out. I said, I have to do it this way, otherwise I will be a phony. Because the guy that broke me in on KABC in Los Angeles, he said, above all, be honest with the audience. The audience will forgive many things, but they won't forgive dishonesty. So I was honest with the audience. Well, then Peter Strauss saw the rating zoom, the meaner I got, the angrier I got, the rating zoomed, and Peter Strauss never told me to cool it again. Well, Mark Levin, you, you must go through the same thing sometimes. Sometimes you just think to yourself, you've got to be honest, and you've just got to uh, do what's in your heart, right? You know, Bob is exactly right. The, it's, the, the connection with your audience is what it is. In other words, B 
be honest, be yourself. I'm myself. Bob was his self, is himself, and all the, the better hosts are. The, the people are not stupid. They're going to pick up a fraud. Don't copy other people unless you're doing it subconsciously. You know, when I steal something from Bob, I try to give him attribution. Yeah. I particularly love his Jesse Jerkson line, which I can't <laughs> use enough, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> but um, the uh, it is crucial that you be yourself. And, um, I, you know, I don't know how you can't. You show up every day, you do three, I do three hours, or you do four hours, or whomever you are, and uh, the public's going to know soon enough. I get it all the time. Why are you so angry? I said, because I'm angry. What do you mean, why am I so angry? Or why are you so passionate? Because I'm not NPR, that's why. You know, and, uh, pe and, and people are upset today, and there's a reason for them to be upset today. Now, in my own situation, you know, I do my program from a bunker, as we say. <laughs> and uh, so my, my producer and call screener are somewhere else. So I'm sitting in a room by myself. Nobody can wave me off, not that I'd pay attention anyway, or anything of the sort. And I feel like Bob Grant, if Bob Grant were in a studio or not in a studio doing his radio program, nobody could wave him off either. And the reason is simple. It's called integrity. Integrity. He's got integrity. And what I'm trying to say is, even though I come under attack, nobody came under attack like Bob Grant because Bob Grant was unique. Bob Grant was early. Bob Grant helped form this whole business. And uh, so this is why guys like me stand on his shoulders and appreciate him. In fact, I'll be honest, I love Bob Grant. Wow. And whenever I see Bob Grant, I go out of my way to try and give him a big hug and say, say uh, hello to everybody and, uh, around him, as a matter of fact. Wow. Well, Mark Levin, the great one, well said, and, and thanks so much for being with us. Oh, uh, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, it's just overwhelming. I, I I have so much more I would like to say to you, but uh, maybe we'll save it for another time. All right, and, and thanks, Bob, and God bless you, my friend. All right, take care. It's our tribute to Bob Grant, 40th anniversary in New York. Coming up next, Rush Limbaugh will join us on 77 WABC. <laughs> Well, it's Mark Simone here. Forty years ago, Bob Grant came to New York City. We pay tribute to him today. Can you imagine a guy like me sitting in between Bob Grant and Rush Limbaugh? That's like being on the Yankee bench between Lou Gehrig and, and Babe Ruth. And Bob Grant, guess who is with us right now? Rush Limbaugh. Rush, how are you? I am great. I'm, I'm happy for the opportunity to be part of this extravaganza. Bob, how are you doing? Rush, I thank you so much for joining in. Uh, I'm doing just fine, and I know you are doing just great. I'll tell you, I um, I, I have a tele-audience uh, story. I got to New York in uh, the summer of 1988. I arrived in July. The first day my national show started was August 1st, but I was doing a local WABC show at the same time uh, before I, uh, two hours prior to the national show starting. And I remember, you know, this is a kid from Sacramento, California. New York's a big break. I mean, this is this is make it or break it. This is... Where it all happens, and and um, before I got to New York, I somebody I was at Sacramento. A couple people out there vacationing from New York, and were calling and talking about Bob Grant uh, on the radio. And I said, "I've heard of Bob Grant. I know Bob Grant's the standard setter there. Do you think what I do on the radio here would work in New York?" I asked them. They said, "I don't know, Rush. All the music you play, I mean, Grant kind of owns it." So I arrive in New York with that in my mind, and. Uh, they put me on from from 10 a.m. to noon, and I'm I'm following some guy named Dave Dawson. I'm sharing a show prep desk with Lynn Samuels. It's not exactly <laughs> a, uh, uh, a fr you know friendly atmosphere. And I, 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 Bob, I tell you, for the first month, I really didn't think I was going to make it because every day the only calls I got were people who wanted to talk about what Bob Grant had said the day before, <laughs> but were unable to get through to him. <laughs> And I that that I mean and and Bob Grant for his his part was um, welcoming. He never felt threatened by any new pe person or voice uh, that arrived at WABC, and and that he was he was one of the most welcoming people there. And I will never forget it, Bob, because you were instrumental in uh, in helping me find a home there at WABC. Well, I'll tell you the memory I have of uh, you coming up here to WABC was uh, when you were standing outside my office and uh, you cleared your throat, you uh, uh, kind of just stood there and I said, yeah, and uh, you uh, introduced yourself. 
and you were so polite, and uh, you said, uh, and these words I will never forget, your reputation precedes you, sir, you said. <laughs> and uh, I, I think I called you Mr. Grant, too. That's right, you <laughs> did. And uh, when people would ask about you, they say, who is this uh, new guy? Who is this uh, new guy? Uh, you like him? And I say, yeah, he, he's very good. As a matter of fact, we had a young lady here by the name of Denise Dooley. Oh, and yeah. And she asked me what I thought of you, and I said, and this here's an understatement. Here's an understatement, ladies and gentlemen. I said, he's going to go places. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would know. I mean, Bob Bob would know. I, You know, Mark, you um, you know as well as Bob does everybody else how cutthroat uh, and ego-oriented uh, broadcasting is. And uh, Bob was the kingpin. He was WABC. I mean, he's the guy that gave its identity. And, and most people in his situation would be wary uh, and defensive of anybody new arriving in town. Uh, especially under circumstances in which I did. I mean, I'm this, I'm this so-called savior going to do the, a national uh, radio show. If anybody should have been doing one, it would have been Bob Grant. But uh, it, it was um, unlike any experience I'd ever had on a radio station. He was welcoming. He was embracing and totally unthreatened. And that helped me find a, a, a little place of security inside that radio station because it was a huge movement. I'd, I'd been to New York one time prior to that for just a weekend baseball series when I worked for the Kansas City Royals. I really knew nothing about the city. Hmm. And I was scared to death. Now, let me ask you something. Bob would always he'd be ferocious with a caller. He'd hang up on the caller. He'd threaten to punch the caller. And you came to New York, and you did just the opposite. No matter how much you fought with the caller, you were very polite. You'd say thank you when you, when you ended the call. What, well, this, this well, proves this proves what Mark, what you just said, this proves what Mark Levin said before that you've got to be yourself, yeah. and Rush has always been himself. Well, not only that, there's nobody better at what Bob does than Bob. I mean, why, why try to be Bob Grant Jr.? I mean, uh, I, there's still people out there imitating you to this day, Bob. <laughs> I mean, there's still people to this day trying to be Bob Grant Jr. Uh, in, in their own name. But I, th- my... My, uh, I had a warning when I started the, the program. Rush, if you insult callers, we're not going to be able to get stations to clear your program. <laughs> so it, it was, it was kind of uh, an admonition as well. But it, you're, Mark, you're right. It wasn't, it wasn't my style. I've always, if I'm inviting him to call, um, I'll at least, uh, at least be nice to him. But uh, the larger reason why, why do what Bob Grant does? My whole, my whole uh, effort was trying to be somebody. Uh, be myself, as Bob said, that was unlike anybody else, because he already owned the whole uh, strategy and technique and personality that he had. And it's uh, it's amazing. I forty years, Bob. I mean, at at, at one radio station in, in in New York City in this business is just unparalleled. Well, you know, uh, here's another Rush Limbaugh story I want to tell. I was out visiting my son. Uh, in San Diego, and uh, he had a client who uh, uh, he wanted to uh, to go see, and he said, Dad, come on, take a ride with me. Uh, I want you to meet Mrs. So-and-so. She's a lovely lady, a very good client of mine. We went out there, and uh, she was holding uh, he, she was holding a book called, uh, uh, well, I won't give the title just yet. Anyway, she's holding a book. And I recognized the title of the book, and I knew who the author was. And uh, she said, oh, Mr. Grant, uh, your son says uh, you're in radio in New York. And I said, yes. She said, do you know Rush Limbaugh? (laughs) And I said, well, I see you're reading uh, The Way Things Ought to Be. That was the title of Rush's first book. And she said, yes. I said, have you read it? She said, well, I'm about halfway through. I said, go to page 13. And she opened to page 13. And she said, oh, my gosh, he's writing all about you, she yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, I even remember the page number, Rush. Well, it's all it's all true. I, 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 you know that roast that we did, uh, they were the, the, the done for you in New Jersey? Yeah, 1991. Uh, 1991. That was that was a blast too. I mean, I, I, uh, you were loved, Bob. You still are. It's it, it's uh, it's it's rare to have a connection with an audience like you did and ha- and have 
uh, and maintain it for as long as you had. And it's it happened because you're genuine, uh, and you uh, you never lied to people. You never made things up. You never said you didn't believe something you believed, or vice versa. And you held your ground. I mean, you had. Uh, you, I mean, you were in the throes of controversy throughout your career, and you held your ground, and you always maintained your. Uh, reputation and your dignity. You really were and still are a guiding light for anybody who takes this business seriously and wants to succeed in it. Wow. Well, you, to hear Rush Limbaugh and Bob Grant talk things over, this is like uh, hearing George Washington and Thomas Jefferson discuss uh, how things were back then. Gosh, I don't, I, I don't know if I'll be... It's a good thing I'm not wearing a hat today. <laughs> I'd never be able to, to well, get it on. I want to tell... Uh, you mentioned the roast. I yep. want to tell another story about what a genuine guy Rush Limbaugh is. Oh, no, no. Rush uh, had to be in San Francisco. The roast was uh, coming up on the 15th of September, 1991. And uh, there was some doubt whether he would be there. But doggone it, he took a plane. He, I, I understand he had to make some changes. He made sure he got out there to the May... Fair Farms in West Orange, New Jersey, where the roast was taking place. And there he was uh, practicing, getting ready to go on for the roast. Wow. Bob, they loved, Freddie Roman was the MC, and they loved you at that thing. That was, that was the thing for me to note uh, was, I mean, this was your audience, and they came out to see, and they loved you, and, and it was uh, everything about, about that was educational and informative for me. And I'll never, you know, Pat O'Connor... Uh, I I didn't even try to roast you, Bob, because I couldn't compete with those guys. I mean, they were they were hilarious. Uh, Pat O'Connor said, looked at me, just took one look at Rush. It's called Don't Swallow. John <laughs> 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 set, set the stage, and I I uh, I just I cherish all these memories. You know, time goes by pretty fast. I can't believe it's been forty years, Bob, and I can't believe it's been twenty two with me. But because it, it's you know you live in the moment, but it's um, it really was a golden opportunity for me to have a chance to, to work at the same station you did because you gave everybody an audience. By you the gave... way, Rush, anytime I want to see you roasting me or whatever you say, I go to YouTube. Oh, yeah, it's up there if people want to see it. I go. To, somebody uh, told me, you got to see Rush roasting you. I said, well, I, you want to buy a tape? You want to buy a tape? <laughs> he said, oh, I don't, I don't mean it on the tape. He's on YouTube, and sure enough, Folks, you want to see Rush mo- roasting me? Go to YouTube. <laughs> well, Rush Limbaugh, that meant a lot for us to have you uh, come on here today. Thanks for the opportunity. It's always uh, it's always a pleasure. I'm I'm one of Bob's fine admirers. The courage and guts, stick to itiveness. He really has. I'm not blowing smoke. He's uh, he's, he's for people that wanted to pay attention. He's been the uh, guy that showed the way, guiding well, light. Well, look who's talking. <laughs> That's well, right. Both you guys. Yeah. Well, there's always somebody before you. And for me, that was Bob. There's yeah. always somebody in front of you. I mean, we, we, we can't exaggerate, but here's something, uh, Mark, that is not an exaggeration. The man at the other end of this telephone line is an institution. He is a, he's gone beyond just being a person. He's an institution. That's true. And, and to both you guys, you know, they always it say... It is true. Mark, you can do it all while holding court of the lanes. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I first met <laughs> you. <laughs> two of us the two of us can't do that. We get kicked out of the lanes. You are welcome. That's true. Rush Limbaugh, thanks so much for being with us. All right. Thank you guys very much. All right. Thanks. Well, Thanks, it, Rush. They say it's the pioneers that take all the arrows, and boy, you guys took a lot of them. <laughs> and we'll continue with our tribute to Bob Grant, 40 years in New York today. Well, it's Mark Simone here with our tribute to Bob Grant, 40 years in New York, a who's who of talk radio. Coming up, Sean Hannity will be with us, Monica Crowley, Barry Farber, uh, Congressman Peter King, and more. I, I, we, we ought to take some calls. Let's just take a call. Uh, they forgot to put his name up here, but just uh, call her. Say hello to Bob Grant. Well, uh, hello, Dad. How are you? Uh, I, I'm just fabulous. I mean, I, I... Well, we're trying to fool you. You recognize the voice, I guess. No, I didn't. Uh, say some more. Hi, 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 Dad. It's Jeff. It's Jeff Grant. It's your you son, Jeff. One. Jeff? Your, 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 yeah, your, we were... Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sake. What are you, disguising your voice? <laughs> well, I still have a little bit of that morning voice left over. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now I know it's my son, Jeff. Okay. Uh, so uh, you didn't uh, when we uh, talked uh, on the phone last night. You didn't tell me you were going to be part of this. It would say it's uh, no. We we kept this uh, 
in uh, in bunker like secrecy. Wow. Hey, uh, Jeff Grant, what was it like? What was Bob Grant the father like? Uh, was he anything like the guy on the radio? That's a great question, Mark. He, uh, you know, in in many ways, he is like the guy on the radio. He certainly is not as animated uh, in person, but the passion. Uh, the the uncompromising uh, the the uncompromising stand on values that's all there. Uh, he is much more low key uh, in person. He's uh, you know I've heard people describe him as dignified. Uh, he certainly I, I would describe him that way in a in a social setting. But you get him in a discussion with somebody around the dinner table, and uh, he'll, you know he'll get a little energetic, and he he never sways from the positions that you hear him. Uh, that you hear him elicit, uh, that you hear him uh, talk about on the radio. He's he's the same guy in that sense. Wow! And uh, when you put on the radio as a young kid, listen to that, you say, "Wow, is this the same guy I know from the dinner table?" Well, <laughs> uh, you know, first few times, I, I just uh, yeah, the first few times I said, "Wow, this is really," I, it just I I just sit back I and I, I sat back and listened. Uh, because uh, it's strange, you know, you you do uh, have almost that exact reaction. Wow, this this is Dad. This is the same guy. And yet, when he walks in the door, and uh, you you see him at the end of the day, he's uh, you know, and, and and he comes out. You put his arms around him. It's, it's you know, it's all of that is kind of uh, put aside, and and he's just uh, plain old Dad, I guess. Yeah. But uh, but you can still have a great uh, political discussion with him. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you can still have a discussion about sports. He, he loves talking sports, by the way. As you know, he hates the, uh, he hates the New York Yankees. <laughs> and uh, we, I mean, we just, there's just a, an array of things we enjoy talking about, and uh, and that's that's what you get. Hmm. Uh, you know, there's a, a story hearing uh, my son Jeff uh, about on one the minute. line. Uh, very quickly, I'll tell this story on myself. Uh, when I would uh, talk to the audience, I'd tell them they should be firm as parents and uh, not too easy because uh, their children won't grow up right. Well, there was an incident where uh, Jeff and uh, his brother Chris uh, had been uh, reprimanded uh, by their mother. <laughs> and uh, uh, the mother was very angry. She said, you better give it to them. So I pretended, I, I said, all right, I'm coming in swinging, boys. And uh, I took a belt and I hit the bed. <laughs> and I said, now, listen, make sure you, you will cry or holler like I'm hitting it. And I kept hitting the bed. And finally she came in. She said, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Remember that, Jeff? Well, I do. I Jeff, do. I do. We, we, co we coordinated that well. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Coming up in the next hour, Sean Hannity and more. Our tribute to Bob Grant continues. September 20th, 1970. Bob Grant hit the airwaves in New York and changed the New York talk radio scene forever. Your influence counts. Use it. For 40 years, Bob Grant has entertained, informed, and irritated. And you are too. A thorn in the side of politicians has been fired too many times to count. And along the way, influenced some of the biggest talk superstars of our time. There is only one Bob Grant. And while some call me the great one, honestly, Bob, you're the great one. Now, straight ahead on 77 WABC, it's the Bob Grant 40th Anniversary Tribute and Roast with Ringmaster Mark Simone. Well, I hope you didn't miss the first hour. Rush Limbaugh paying tribute to Bob Grant, Mark Levin, and a whole lot more. If you missed it, by the way, we'll put the podcast up on the website so you can hear it you can save it uh and, and bob grant we wanted to make this sort of a roast but uh unfortunately nobody wants to say anything bad about you they all want to just pay tribute uh, everybody loves you well it's uh it's coming through I, I i'm deeply touched mark i really am and uh i think i'll absorb what's going on uh later on i i can't quite absorb it now. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, WMCA years ago, early 80s, that was the big talk station. And I remember going to work there. I was a young little whippersnapper. Uh, and the, the gods of talk radio were there. Barry Gray, he had invented, literally, talk radio. Uh, Bob Grant and Barry Farber. These were like the giants of talk radio. And guess who's on the line right now? Barry Farber himself. Barry, how are you? Thank you. And I tell you what an honor it is for me to be invited to honor 
Bob Grant, and I sort of claim, I claim the high ground here because I may have been the first of everybody who's spoken except his children to see the birth of the broadcast, Bob Grant. I remember it well. Yeah. Now, you were already here. Tell us what it was like for a big established talk show host to watch Bob Grant come to New York. Well, I saw a lot of others come. And, they, you know, right, I was big dog in the meat house <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on another 50,000-watt station. Yeah. And we saw a lot of them come. And most of them started out weak and gradually tapered off. <laughs> <laughs> After I heard Bob Grant, for a total of 65, 75 seconds, I knew that I had to move over in the saddle more than halfway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, uh, how did he change uh, everything in New York? It was uh, There had never been anybody like him before. No. Well, I, I, I recognize, by the way, uh, uh, underline that word change. Uh, when I started, uh, radio, talk radio, was going through its most important change. Uh, we were going through our alphabet, but we were only in like the L, M, N. We hadn't gotten anywhere near the N. We'd gotten over our early uh, uh, disease. The early disease of talk radio is radio never interviewed. They never challenged. They never analyzed. They never criticized. Uh, radio didn't interview. All radio did was congratulate. <laughs> the toughest question you ever heard was, tell me about your next movie, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so we got rid of that. But we, we needed Bob Grant to take us from the middle of the alphabet to the end. I grew up in radio thinking it was against the law to make a, an elected official feel bad. <laughs> uh, it was Bob who taught us how to spring the length of our chain and sink our fangs <laughs> into malfeasance, stupidity, arrogance, waste, uh, uh, um, pig-headed, anti-public non-concern for the individual. Bob Grant taught us how to do this. Now, look, I know you have a lot of people lined up. I just want to make sure I have a chance to ask Bob one question, may I? Yeah. Oh. Bob, you know, uh, the cost of being a legend is things get tied around your neck that don't belong there. Uh, movie star James Cagney never said, you rat, you dirty rat. Humphrey Bogart never said, all right, Louie, drop the gun. Mae West never said, come up and see me sometime. Greta Garbo never said, I want to be alone. Question. Did Bob Grant ever really say, get off the phone? <laughs> I think he did over and over well, again. Well, I think, I think Barry, being a student, a perpetual student, I think uh, Barry's testing even me here uh, because I never said, get off the phone. I said, get off my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, uh, you made the right point because delivering a valuable broadcast is not only putting good stuff out there, it's keeping rotten stuff from getting out there. And that line of yours, get off the phone, was one of the best surgical instruments that talk radio ever developed. Wow. Well, you know, people have asked me to uh, shout at them, get off my phone, and then after I would do that, they would thank me. <laughs> uh, it's, well, it's amazing. Uh, well, I want to tell you about uh, about this gentleman. Yeah. Here's a gentleman, if there ever was one, Barry Farber. Uh, Barry was such a magnanimous guy. I mean, he's he, he just a, a, a wonderful person. And uh, here I had come to uh, New York, and I was on uh, a, a smaller station, WMCA, and uh, I knew from our sales manager over there that we were kicking uh, tush, but good. And WOR was getting nervous, and they felt, how dare WMCA uh, beat us? And uh, at least at certain times a day when Bob Grant was on. So Barry, instead of uh, not wanting to publicize me, uh, he invited me to be a guest on his show. And he did the most lengthy 
phrasing uh, introduction. Mark, I'm looking around. I'm thinking, who's he talking <laughs> about? He's saying all these great things. Who's this guy talking about? <laughs> he was talking about me. Wow. Do you remember that, Barry? Uh, I do, and I remember those days. You know, at WOR, we never talk. We never had ratings. We didn't know what ratings were because we were the only. You know, we we were a volcano in a forest of Ronson lighters <laughs> until you came along and turned uh, WMCA from what was called a few minutes ago a smaller station into another volcano all by yourself. Well, he did. Well, Barry Farber, uh, great uh, having you with us. Thanks so much for doing this. Look, it is my honor to be allowed to come in and honor the enfabled Bob Grant. Bob, I'm from North Carolina. Every state has a state bird. Every state has a state song. We're the only state that has a state compliment. And I want to give it to you right now. Are you ready for the North Carolina State Compliment? You bet. Buddy, you ain't no accident. (laughs) Well, Barry Farber, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Barry. Thank you. To be continued, Bob, another 40 at least. All right. right. Coming up, uh, Monica Crowley will be with us, uh, Congressman Peter King, Sean Hannity, Michael Harrison of Talkers Magazine, and more on 77 WABC. Hey, it's Mark Simone here. Coming up, Sean Hannity will join us. Congressman Peter King in just moments. We pay tribute to Bob Grant. Forty years ago today, he came to New York. and uh, But we've got a lot of people who want to say hello to you. First of all, great talk show host and, uh, of course, uh, television star on uh, Fox and on uh, the McLaughlin the Group. Monica Crowley is on the line. Monica, how are you? Mark, great to talk to you. Bob, I am so honored to be here today with you. Congratulations. Four decades on the air. Wow, you look way too young to have been on the radio for 40 years. Well, thank you, Monica. I'm glad that uh, one time when you came up to uh, my studio, uh, someone uh, took pictures because I still have a photo of you and I together. And uh, every now and then if someone says, hey, uh, I don't know, Grant, I don't know if you were such a big star. I said, well, what do you mean? Look who I'm with. And he, oh, Monica Crowley. Oh. <laughs> By the way, Bob, I do the exact same thing. And whenever I want to make my boyfriend jealous, I take out that picture, too. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you started it all. Man, you were the pioneer in conservative talk. And the rest of us exist because of you. And I am just so honored to share the microphone with you today and uh, just to have worked with you in the past. I've got a great story. I don't know if Bob remembers this, but years ago, one of my very first radio interviews, this was 1996. So my first book about President Nixon had just come out. And uh, Bob was on the air at WOR, and I was booked on his show, and I was so excited because, after all, it's Bob Grant. And I was a little nervous about meeting Bob, and I was escorted upstairs, and, uh, Bob, you could not have been more lovely to me. You were so gracious, and you were so kind to me, both on and off the air. But I remember we were conducting the interview, and it was a long interview. It was about a half an hour, which in radio is an eternity, right? And I'm sitting there. i got my headset on, and Bob and I are having a great time on the air. And all of a sudden, I feel something race across my foot. Now, this was in the summertime, so I think I was in a a pair of sandals. So it was unmistakable that there was something that had just run across my foot. And I looked down, and it was a mouse. Oh, It was a mouse, and I didn't want to throw off the interview or alert Bob to the fact that a mouse had just run across my foot in the middle of the interview. So I'm trying to stay cool and composed, and we hit our first commercial break, and I told Bob that a mouse had run across my foot, and he kind of shrugged in his great nonchalant way, and he said, yeah, it happens here all the time. (laughs) Uh, You know, there we were. We're on the 24th floor. He wasn't supposed to come up that high, for heaven's sake. Let's just point out the mice running around, that was WOR, not WABC. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we keep a clean studio here. Well, Monica, thanks for checking in with us, and uh, thanks um, for all the good work you do. Monica, thank you, and congratulations. What uh, Mark said when he introduced you was certainly uh, apropos. And uh, you could give uh, my regards to uh, your brother-in-law. I sure will. 
Uh, I absolutely will. Bob, it is such a joy to be on with you today, and congratulations. 40 years on the radio. We have been so blessed to have you on the air, uh, bringing this country back to, to rights every day that you take that microphone, and we are honored that you've been with us all this time. I am honored to call you as a friend, and we look forward to four, 40 more years with oh. you. Thank you very much, Monica. Thanks, Monica. Hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Bob Grant Show always had a lot of other voices on there, and one of them uh, is with us right now, and he would do the traffic every day. Joe Nolan, are you there? <laughs> yes, sir. How you doing? Joe uh, Nolan. Hello. You know, there, there's, uh, there's two, uh, people do, uh, two types of people doing traffic. All those other guys and <laughs> Joe Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You hear me? Yeah. Uh, now, get... What do you remember about working with Bob? Oh, I tell you, one of the things that I remember, uh, the, the one story that I always remember, I don't know if you remember Bob or not, but remember when we went out to New Jersey and almost bulldozed the tolls over at the Garden State Parkway? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, there was this, uh, Mark, the story goes is that, uh, you know, they were going to raise the tolls on the Garden State Parkway. So Bob decides to have this big rally out in New Jersey in Bloomfield. So there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there. And there was a bulldozer. So the deal was that we were going to, just kiddingly around, going to bulldoze the tolls. And, of course, there were some police around and everything like that. Well, somebody got up on the bulldozer and started the thing. Well... They came, the police, the state police came from every corner. They must have been hiding in trees, these guys, coming after us, coming after Bob. And I will never forget that in Bloomfield because they really honestly thought we were going to run a bulldozer up on the Garden State Parkway and bulldoze the Bloomfield tolls. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, there was a guy uh, who was running for governor. He's, a matter of fact, uh, he's a dentist who uh, has been in the legislature for years and years, mm -hmm. and that was his campaign promise. If I'm elected, I will bulldoze the tolls. <laughs> <laughs> I but forgot we were going to do it. <laughs> there were all these Bob Grant crusades and things you oh, had yeah. all those years. And, uh, you know, memories are starting to come back as I'm thinking. I, I remember also in the early 80s, you were on WMCA, and I remember hearing President Ronald Reagan on your show. It was the first time I'd ever heard the President of the United States on any radio talk show. Hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, I have uh, a disc now. It's a disc. You know, I used to talk about the tapes. I'm saving tapes. People say, what are you, uh, tapes? <laughs> Come on, get with it. So now I have discs. One other quick one, Mark, too, if you have time. I, it was very, very funny, and I wasn't involved in this at all. I was just listening. Yeah. When I was coming out of a Devil's Game at the old Meadowlands Arena, and the, Bob used to be on before he went on in the afternoons. He was on for a very short period of time in the evening on WABC. So what happened was I come out of the I come out of the Meadowlands and I just put it on just to see the end of the Yankee game, right, which was on. And Bob used to get preempted all the time for the Yankee games, which, of course, Mr. Grant just loved, right? Yeah. He just didn't like that at all. Well, at the end of the Yankee game, you know, they give you the, 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 the time to say WABC New York, yeah. right? So you hear, da 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 And instead of WABC New York, you hear, get Gaddafi! <laughs> bum, 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 from ABC News. I'm, it, was one of, it was absolutely hilarious. It just came out of nowhere. The shortest Bob Grant show in the history of radio. It was two seconds. Wow. Well, you Joe, remember that. God bless you. Joe I remember Nolan, that. Thanks for checking in with us. Great, uh, great to hear from you. We got Thank to, you, sir. Thanks a lot. We have so many people on the line. There's one call I want to take. There was a number of years where from 10 until noon here on WABC, this was her show. She was the host. Great, great talk show host. Lynn Samuels is, is on the line. Lynn, how you doing? Hi. There would be no Lynn Samuels if there had not been a Bob Grant first. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I was a listener to Bob Grant when he came to New York. I was a caller. I heard every time I called him, every call ended with, <laughs> get off my phone. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, Lynn was a caller. I think I put you on the air. Didn't I go out in the street and interview you a few times? And then... Yes, you did, but you didn't know who I was. But no, then... I, I didn't know. She was a mystery lady. As a matter of fact, uh, so mysterious, I was in uh, her uh, father's house. Uh, I was flirting with running for some office. I think it was mayor. I don't know. I don't remember. And there was this girl uh, sitting there in the corner, not saying a word, but eyeing every move I made with That's grave right. suspicion. And <laughs> watching you adoringly. Yeah. And by the way... <laughs> Lynn was at the roast, the Bob Grant roast, weren't you, Lynn? Yes, I was, and you cut me. I got cut out of the video, you oh. know. 
because I insulted Al D'Amato at the roast. Uh oh, yeah, Lynn was the. Uh, uh, that was not my idea, though. To, to do. I'm that. sure it wasn't, but I owe my entire career in radio, Bob, to you. Wow. To listening to you. If I had never listened to you, <laughs> I would have never ended up on the air at WABC. Right? Sometimes I was on before you, and sometimes I was on after you. But for a lot of years, this was your show, 10 to noon, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Then it was yeah. 7 to 10. Then, right. you know. As a matter, as a matter was, of fact, I, I couldn't believe it. I never could believe it that I was on the same radio station with you. It was like. It was like a dream come true. Wow. Yeah, this is fantastic. You know, I really needed this. I, the fact of the matter is I really needed this. Uh, now, we had, uh, there was a fellow by the name of uh, Henry Vitiello who had organized the roast. He, he was uh, a, a, a fantastic guy. And he was asking various people who had worked with me if they would participate. And uh, he asked Lynn. He also asked someone uh, by the name of... Uh, do I say Joy Behar? Is that all right? <laughs> well, well, yeah, now, now Joy that. Behar replaced you right here. At, yes, shit. Well, but, but she Joy took Behar my told uh, Henry Vitiello that uh, she was too busy. But Lynn Samuels said, You bet I'll be there. Wow. Yeah. Well, Lynn, thanks for checking in with us. Great to hear your voice. Thank you, Bob. I love you for 40 years. Uh, yeah. Same here, Lynn. Nearly as long as the Lady Josephine. Uh, she's sitting right here. Well, thanks a lot. I don't mean to rush everybody, but we've got uh, guests that want to pay tribute to you, kind of double parked all around the studio. Uh, with us right now, Congressman Peter King. Congressman, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark and Bob. Congratulations to you, and thanks for all your friendship over the years, and thanks for being uh, the voice of sanity, the voice of reason. And I told my daughter I was going to be on the show today, and she still remembers the uh, convention back in San Diego in 1996, where we virtually spent four days together. That's right, Peter King, uh, congressman from the 3rd Congressional District of New York. Uh, you know, if we didn't have you, Congressman King, I don't know uh, what we'd have. Well, we'd have to have you run for office, Bob. <laughs> you remember, the, the, you, you, of course, were on the Bob Grant show. Do you remember your first appearance? Were you a little intimidated by Bob Grant, the idea of being on with him? Yeah, I, I was because everyone was scared of Bob Grant. Even people who liked him were scared of him. You know, you <laughs> no, it is. And also you realize when you're on with Bob, even if you're in agreement, if you say the wrong thing, he would call you on it. I mean, he was uh, a professional. and He was really uh, a top-shelf guy. And, uh, yeah, I remember it was uh, when I first got to Congress. I think it was on uh, President Clinton's uh, Midnight Basketball Bill, or whatever it was. And uh, I was on the show talking about that. And I, I survived it. So after that, I figured... If I can survive this, I'll be okay. And uh, but seriously, I mean, Bob, you've always been there. You've again a voice of sanity. And you know, right now the country is going in a conservative way, and it's sort of popular to be uh, uh, saying a lot of uh, anti-federal government uh, statements and everything. The fact is, you're there in the good years and the bad years. Even when uh, Democrats and liberals are riding high, you're there to cut through it, no matter what people say, what people are going to think. <laughs> And that's really, uh, this means so much to know there's one person you can count on. Oh, well, Congress oh thank you, Peter King. And uh, you are so consistent. I've had people say, you know, you have him on quite a bit. And I, I think I understand why. Well, I, I know why, because people need to hear what you have to say. And you have the authority of being a member of Congress. Well, Congressman Peter King, thanks for being with us. Well, thank you. And Bob, I'll see you in another 40 years. <laughs> okay, that's a date. Well, we pay, okay. Thanks a lot. We pay tribute to uh, Bob Grant 40 years ago. Today, he came to New York City. Coming up next, another one of the greatest names in radio. It's a who's who of talk radio today. Another one who will, I think will tell us he was influenced by Bob Grant. Sean Hannity will be with us next on WABC. Well, it's Mark Simone here. What a tribute to Bob Grant. We've already had Rush Limbaugh, the great one, Mark Levin, Monica Crowley, Barry Farber. If you just tuned in, if you missed any of this, we'll put the podcast up on our website, wabcradio.com. You want to listen to it later, or if you want to download it and save it or pass it around, do that. It'll be up soon. Well, now, with us right now, uh, there was a whole, uh, some of the giants of talk radio today influenced by Bob Grant. Uh, here is a guy, one of the absolute giants. He's way too young to call a legend. Uh, but we'll be doing one of these tributes to him someday. Uh, one of the just the backbone of WABC, one of the real giants in in talk radio. Sean Hannity, how are you? Mark Simone, you're a great American, and Bob Grant, let's be heard. How are you guys? <laughs> uh, He's great. Oh, 
when Mark was uh, giving you that introduction, I'm sitting here swelling with pride because I'll never forget that uh, February 24th, 1996, I believe it was, when uh, someone asked me at a seminar, a radio and record seminar, uh, who I thought would be the coming uh, radio talk show host star, and I saw you sitting in the last row there, and I said, as a matter of fact, he's right here. (laughs) He's Sean Hannity over there. Stand up, Sean. You did. Remember that? You know, I, uh, th- this is a true story. Because uh, it was you, it was Jerry Williams, it was Gene Burns, you know, the great pioneers. And by, by this is such a great honor for you and, and well-deserved because you are you have paved the way for all of us who followed. And in and, and so many ways we owe you. It was a really incredible moment i was in the back row i was standing there with next to tom like and they said well well who are some of the guys that might be coming up in the industry yeah i was stunned when you when you turn around and mention my name now uh, sean as a young young kid you're listening to the radio listen to bob grant what is going through your head as you listen to him you know i just was mesmerized yeah i, say, I mean i had a, a great interest in talk radio since i was a kid and and barry farber and and bob grant and barry gray earlier but you know, Bob just, you know, the thing I love, Bob, is you just popped out of the radio. And, <laughs> you know, it was, when you think back at the time, I mean, there weren't very many talk radio stations around the country. It's now obviously exploded into a huge industry, but in large part because of you. And, and I think one of the reasons you shocked all the media elites for all those years and drove them nuts is because they'd never heard anybody give strong opinions like you did all the time. Yeah. Well. Uh, that's so true. Uh, you know, something else I remember, Mark, you had uh, been asked to do uh, an audition at CNBC. That's correct. And uh, you asked me if I would be your only guest for that hour. And we uh, did that program. I think I still have the tape somewhere, but that's another reason I'm proud of you. Well, you know? I, I did have that. I still have that tape. And, and I was an Atlanta local radio host, Bob, and... And I, I called you up. You did not know who I was at the time. And I said, would you mind? Because I had one of the reasons I called you is because I'd grown up listening to you. And, you know, the, one of the big reasons I'm in talk radio today is because I did listen to you. And I said, would you? I had an opportunity to host a Saturday night program on CNBC. And I called you up out of the blue and I asked you if you'd do it. And you were very gracious. You came over. We spent time together. And. If you recall, that became a a pivotal night in your life. (laughs) Mark is wondering what you mean by that. Well, well, this this is an inside story. Oh, okay. Uh (laughs) Well, well, it's it's the long story short is is immediately that night Bob came under heavy incoming liberal fire. Oh, (laughs) so but we both remember for both reasons. Well. Yeah, you know, there, yeah, for a guy that's supposed to be smart, I'm pretty stupid because uh, New York Magazine sent this guy, Phil Gorovich, up here to interview me, and he was very nice, and I'm talking. I never said anything uh, that I should be ashamed of uh, because I read the actual interview, not the one that he printed it, that they printed in New York Magazine. And uh, it, was, it was just horrible, just horrendous. But... Uh, Ah, that's part of the Bob Grant story. Well, but what was interesting is it was, uh, I think you went to your favorite diner immediately afterwards, and you had told me the next time I saw you, you said it was that night after we did that interview together that, you know, you came under very heavy incoming fire for what lasted for a couple of weeks. But, uh, look, Bob, I, I want on one serious note, if I can, and I know other people have been, been praising you, and but i got to tell you something. For all of us that work in this industry, that love what we do, that have the freedom and the ability every day to express our views, the, you, cut the, you cut the path for all of us. You made it easier for all of us. You opened up a door. You set the foundation for what became a, a huge industry. And there's not a single person that ever gets behind a microphone that doesn't really owe you a debt of gratitude. You were always a great pioneer, a true original. You've been a wonderful personal friend to me over the years. 
uh, the fact that, that we've been able to become friends has, has been a great honor in my life, and I just wanted to say thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you. Coming from, from you, Sean, you have been such a huge success, I don't have to tell you, and you deserve it, every bit of it. Well, I, I don't know if that's true, but I will tell you that you are a big part of it and have been a great inspiration to me. And, uh, you know, the fact that our road is a little bit easier, Bob, in other words, that people aren't as shocked by, <laughs> by people that give opinions, you know, you made it easier for all of us, and it took great courage and fortitude and strength on your part. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I, I love hearing your voice. Let's be heard. Let's get it going. Let's get the game on. You've had an em enormous impact on the political process on top of this in the country. Um, and, and that is that, that talk radio and people, and we see it happening now right before our eyes, can impact the political process in the country. Yeah. And, and that, to me, is, is, is a great legacy for you. Well, Sean Hannity, thanks for being with us. And thank you very much, Sean. Good to talk to you. Thank you, Bob. You're a great American, and uh, thank you very much. And, Mark, always good to talk to you, my friend. All right. Take care. Well, you know, uh, I said this at the beginning of the show. WABC switched to talk in 1982 and struggled for a couple of years. All sorts of big hosts came here and couldn't put this station on the map. They couldn't catch WMCA. 1984, they hired Bob Grant, and that's what did the trick. That's when this station took off. So we owe you that. Uh, also, had it not been for you, I don't think Mark Levin or Sean Hannity might, they may not have gone into talk radio. So you are responsible for almost everything here. I'm beginning to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we come back, more of our tribute to Bob Grant on 77 WABC. Well, Mark Simone here with Bob Grant. I hate to say it, we only got a couple minutes left, just two or three minutes, but I wanted to bring on uh, the editor, the publisher of Talkers Magazine. This is the Bible of the talk radio industry, and he has chronicled. Uh, this industry for so many years. Michael Harrison, are you there? I sure am. I wouldn't miss this party for the world, Mark. Wow. And I'm the finale, huh? Yeah, you're the finale. We've had uh, Rush and Sean and oh. Mark Levin and Barry Farber, all the talk radio legends. Uh, give us your view of Bob Grant and, the, and how he affected this whole industry. Well, first of all, it's a, it, it, it shows you that all the talk radio legends would come to a program like this. You know how hard it is to get everybody <laughs> together at the same time in yeah. anything. <laughs> That, right there and then. That's the tribute. Uh, and, and I never, a day does not go by that I am in this business uh, publishing Talkers Magazine and talking about talk radio where the name Bob Grant doesn't come up as having influenced somebody or broken ground or taught uh, the, the way that uh, different techniques are done in this industry. Uh, this is a giant, and Bob, I know you're there. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. Uh, you're, it just warms my heart to be a part of this and to be able to tell you something that so many people have told you, that you've made an extraordinary difference uh, in this broadcasting enterprise known as radio. So you should be very proud of yourself. You're very, very highly regarded and loved by your colleagues those that agree with you, those that disagree with you. This has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with your contributions to American broadcasting, which are unparalleled. Wow. Well, Michael, that uh, certainly is something that I, I cherish, uh, what you have just said. And uh, I want to say this uh, to the audience. Uh, I've been getting all these plaudits, all uh, the praises coming from the uh, various celebrities that you've heard. Uh, I don't know if the public uh, would have any way of knowing that Michael Harrison and Talkers Magazine has uh, been a big factor in elevating Talkers programming around the country. And uh, there are many people. You, you've, you know what you've done, Michael? You've given us an added uh, prestige. You've given us something we needed. And uh, when you uh, put out your publications... Well, we've got about one minute that, left. Okay, one minute. Anyway, Michael, well, Bob, thank Bob, you so much. Say, you, I, I, it's my honor to give credit where credit is due, so if I've been able to do that, it's my pleasure. But the fact that you would take time on your show and your honor to talk about me shows what a good guy you are. And I've got to stop you in your tracks, and I'm going to get out of here so you have time. But what a, what a nice thing for you to say, and that's why you're such a good guy. Well, Mark, Michael... 
And Bob, thank you for that. Michael Harrison, talk. thanks for being with us. Thanks to everybody who was here. Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, uh, Barry Farber, Monica Crowley, Congressman Peter King, Sean Hannity. If you missed any of this, we're going to put the podcast up. It'll be on wabcradio.com. Special thanks to Flipper, by the way, who uh, lined up everybody for today. And Bob, thanks for 40 incredible years. Well, you know, it's very rare that I'm uh, speechless. Well. But... Uh, this is not one of them. I'm not speechless. As a matter of fact, stick around. I have a... Oh, I, I see. More I to, to come. Move out.